good old rock and roll music of the 60s? Well, it's still popular today. Hi, I'm Angie Humphrey. And I'm Tom Van Howe. Welcome to Louisville Tonight. Tonight, Louisville Tonight brings you nostalgia. A rock and roll star who quit singing after 19 years. His name is Mike Gibson. He is a member of the Monarchs. And you know, Angie, as far as we've been able to determine, the Monarchs are the oldest original rock group in captivity in America. And they really had a lot of hit records, too, several years ago. That whole number of them. They've got a couple of albums out that they, they take around to their concerts. I don't think they sell many in stores anymore. But anyway, they were nine guys, and they're all Louisville guys. Went to high school here, and they formed a band, and they're still together, and the lead singer quit. And tonight we're going to show you Mike Gibson's last performance, and believe me, it is a very emotional piece. He's a little more like the rest of us now. It isn't just that he's grown older, even though it's all too true that a little gray is showing through his beard. But at 36, and as a father of three, mortgages and three-piece suits and everyday realities have long since replaced the white socks and the hopes and dreams and schemes for conquering the world overnight. No. What makes Mike Gibson a little more like the rest of us now is that just a few weeks ago he resigned his position as one of America's oldest practicing teenage idols. Now you know who I'm talking about, Dunn. The lead singer of The Monarchs, the hottest musical group to ever export a sound from Louisville. A sound thousands of their fans in this area have clung to as tenaciously as they would a fistful of hundred dollar bills. Now you're seeing Gibson here in his last performance with the original Monarchs. But first, let's quickly go back to 1960 when it all started. Gibson, fresh out of St. Xavier High School, started a five-man combo called the Blue Angels. By 1963, the group had expanded to nine, and they changed their name to the Monarchs, and the die was cast. The basement rehearsals continued, and they worked out harmonies and who did what best. And then, thanks to a fortuitous set of circumstances, they recorded a song called This Old Heart, and they got a break. I talked to Gibson a few weeks ago, three days before his last concert. He recalls what happened. It was an old James Brown song that we found on a a record album that probably hadn't sold very many. It was before, before James Brown became a big hit. And we recorded it in a very screaming, uh, high-pitched style. And there was a black dance band show in Cleveland. It was, I don't remember the call letters, but it was one of the biggest uh, TV stations in Cleveland. And so they booked us because of the fact that they picked up the record. And when we walked into the studio, I'll never forget it, there, there was a good three, four hundred people they'd assembled for this black dance show, and they were all black, the promoters were black, and they looked at us, and we looked at them, and they said, you can't be the Monarchs. And I said, yes, we are. <laughs> so they let us go on. And were there any thoughts about them not letting you go on? For a while, because it was the first time it happened. They'd been in, this dance band had been gone for like six years or whatever, and it was something that wasn't supposed to happen, a white act. But the, what happened was very rewarding to us. The, the people that we got to know there and the way the kids reacted to the song, because they'd already played it in the area, that, that Cleveland radio station broke, or the TV station, broke the song for us with their combined affiliate and then took it on, on a national basis. So they really paid us back for that one trip we made. It was a lot of fun. This old heart led them to a national recording contract and into the biggest year ever. 1964 meant traveling with the Dick Clark caravan and sharing the spotlight with groups like the Beach Boys. There was glitter and a taste of the big time. Dusty Miller, the guy that was in my senior year in high school, started the group with me, made that comment one time. He said, uh, this was five years ago, he said, my God, do you realize that we had the largest national single selling record that ever came out of Louisville? And he said, I'm just beginning to realize that we were a hit. During How long did it take for him to say that? Eight years. <laughs> and of course, in that same year, 1964, they released their biggest national hit, Look Homeward Angel. And on September 15, Mike Gibson sang that particular song as a monarch for the last time. We appreciate it. Personally, I just, uh, I got to a point where after 20 years, I, I'm a bass fisherman and my three boys are bass fishermen and I wanted to do some more of that on the weekend and 
I had throat injury that um, made it not as easy to perform. And for me, I think I'm going to enjoy what I did last Saturday. I had the opportunity to go out and watch them sing and play for the first time. Now, that's the first time I've been on a dance floor for 10 years. I need to take some Fred Astaire lessons. But beyond that, I enjoyed the Monarchs. I understand now why people come and see them and have for so long. Saturday night, when the last of your explosions go off and, and uh, you know, you're twisting and shouting and the people are screaming and you suddenly stop that song and you say, good night, everybody, and that's going to be the last time. How are you going to react emotionally? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. I, I don't know the answer to it. I, I mentioned earlier when we were talking that I thought it was going to be easier than this. It's, it's, I'm going to miss the kinship of the guys. and I don't know. Why don't we just wait till Saturday? I'll do my best to answer you then because I know it's going to be an emotional experience. And then came that last number for the last time with the last goodbye. All I want to do is say thank you to you all. Thanks for the last 20 years. I'd like to just say a couple of words. We'd like to thank everyone for coming out. Whenever Mike the Brown and the band comes to any of our dances, we surely want to get him up. He might retire from what we want to say, but he'll always be in our hearts.